Hello and welcome to Nissin's Math Solutions. So in this video, we'll be looking at how we could understand and use composite functions to solve problems. My hope is that you will learn a lot in this video and that we'll be able to transfer the skills we would have learned in this video to solve exams questions. Stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you. So composite simply suggests the idea of combination of at least two functions. So two or more functions put together will give us a composite function. There's a way where how they are written. Sometimes they are written as relations or mappings and sometimes they are just written like equations. So you see things like f is such that gx maps onto something. Okay. Or you may see something like fgx or you might see things like f dot g x okay or f dot g and then sometimes they have such that x maps onto anything or you might have f f and the, that means you are going to do composite function okay so we are combining all you can have g at the front and they put x there so all of these are examples of how they could write composite functions now there's a way how questions are said and given one of the ways is where they give you a number where you have to work it out or they just ask you to just leave your answer in terms of expression i find that a lot of students struggle with this especially with the expression so you want to watch the video and make sure you practice and you see an example i will encourage you to pause the video have a go first then continue to see if you're on the right track or not okay so let's just say that for example i'm told that the function f is just x squared and then the function g is x add one okay so i've got two functions so one is x squared and one is x add one now there are ways of interpreting this i could say that if i start with x what happens is i square it okay square my x and this result will give me my function f when i come to my function g to get my function g it says when i start with x i should just add one to it this result will give me my function g okay now a question might be asked in this case to find f g x what this actually means is your f you're gonna take the whole of your gx and replace it into your f okay my gx is x add one so when i come to my f instead of starting with x so i'm looking at f now instead of starting with f x i'm gonna start with x add one because x add one is my gx what f says is i should always square so i'm gonna square when I square my g, my outcome will now become my fgx. Now, in the simplest term, what we are trying to say here is fgx is just x plus 1 squared because I've got my g and I just square it. Okay, because the function f says all you've got to do is whatever x is, square it. If my x is x add 1, I'm going to square it. If my x is 2, I'm going to square it. If my x is 3, I'm going to square it. So that's just fgx. If I want to work out in a simpler way, I know my function f is x squared. I know my function g is x add 1. Okay. So fgx, I'm going backwards, simply means f replace my g. My g is x add 1. When I come to when I come to see my f, f says whatever is in the bracket here in front of f, all you do is you square it. So all I'm doing is I write it down, square it. That gives me f g x. 
I'm just following instructions. It's kind of like the substitution into formula. If you haven't watched my video on substitution into formula, watch that to help you with this. Okay. In the same way, I can also work out GFX. You can switch it the other way around. GFX. If I want to work out what GFX is, this time I'm going to take my F function first. So G and my F function is X squared. When I go to G, G says whatever is in my bracket, I should just add one to it. So in this case, I've got, I know that I've got in the bracket X and here I've got X squared. So when I go to G, it says just add one to it. Okay, so X squared, just add one. So you see the difference between FGX and GFX, it's not always the same, okay? So don't think that just because FGX is equal to X plus one all squared, it is the same as GFX. And again, you don't really have to expand brackets unless the question really asks for it. And that's our answer in terms of a variable. Now, they could make it a bit more interesting where we might be giving, say, the function F of X being 2x minus 1 and then the function g of x being 3x plus 2 and they could ask us to find f g x okay so what is i'm just gonna make sure i start by putting my g in front of my f my g function is 3x at 2 okay so what that means is that when i come to f whatever is in the bracket here is replaced by 3x plus 2 whatever was in the bracket here was being multiplied by 2 then take away 1 so all i need to do is go to the function f what happened to what was in the bracket it was being multiplied by 2 so 2 multiplies whatever is in my new bracket 3x plus 2 then take away 1 sometimes with questions like this because there's no squared or powers in the outside the bracket it is sometimes expected of you to expand the bracket and then simplify so when i expand this 2 times 3x is 6x 2 times by 2 is 4 i'm gonna minus 1 okay and as i simplify i'll get 6x add 3 that becomes my function g f of g of x okay i can work out the function g f x okay so we're gonna look at that so for me to look at g f x so i've got g f and x i'm gonna go backwards so i start with my copying of my function f the function f is 2x minus 1 so i write 2x minus 1 okay now when i go to the function g i know that whatever is in the bracket now it says when i go here i should multiply by 3 then add 2 so I'm just going to look at this and multiply by 3 and then add 2. So I'm going to look at what is in the bracket, multiply by 3, then add 2. And then I'll simplify. So expand the bracket. I'll have 6x minus 3, then add 2. So that gives me 6x minus 3 cold air in the room. If I close the window, put on the heater, heats up to 2, it's going to be minus 1 cold air in the room. Again, as you can see, fgx is not the same technically as gfx there are situations where they can be but not in this case again okay sometimes as well there could be a number that we'll have to sub in so they could give us the function f to be let's say x squared and the function g of x to be say 3x plus 1 and then we could be asked to find f g 2 okay so in this case we're going to work out what it is we start by writing our f and then g2 the 2 goes in for g wherever x is so i've got 3 times 2 add 1 and work it out so i've got f 3 times 2 is 6 add 1 is 7 okay if you have not yet watched my video on substitution to formula that will help you with this now if i go to f f says whatever is in the bracket square it so f here 7 is in the bracket therefore i'm going to square it and 7 squared we've done powers already if you've not watched my video on powers feel free to watch that as well it will help you 7 squared is 7 times 7 which is 49 
and that is our answer for FG2. Hope this helped you understand composite functions. Rewatch the video again if you didn't get it the first time. And um, feel free to look at my exams questions to using this formula and this expression and this method to help you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me and watching our video on composite functions. I hope that has improved your maths to some extent. Now, remember to use this video to also watch our exams questions where we can understand and apply the knowledge of composite functions to solve problems. I hope you get to smash your maths. And don't forget to also share, like and subscribe our channel also on our website at Nielsen's Maths Solutions.com. Thank you.